pressure treated lumber, 1700 bucks. IBC tilt, 140. Drip irrigation hose, $200. Drinking black coffee while the garden waters itself, priceless. <laughs> When I first came out here, I set up a small irrigation system for my original garden, and it was, you know, easy enough to handle and whatnot. I've expanded my garden at least 5x since then, and I way outgrew that irrigation system and have just been watering by hand for a long time. Just this last season or so is when I've really started to use all of that extra garden space and I started to realize the burden of watering everything by hand. I knew that it would be a big job to really properly set up a drip irrigation system, and when I made a post saying, man, it's a lot of work doing the garden, a lot of people suggested, well, duh, why haven't you put in a drip irrigation system? And it's because I knew that it was going to be expensive and a lot of work to do it properly, and part of that was setting up a water tower on the correct side of the homestead so that I could run pressurized water to all the gardens and the livestock eventually and do so automated. So if you haul water or if you have a well, most people pump that water to a holding tank. So you use a pump anyway. In this case, whether I hauled some water or I harvest water from the rain water system, I can pump it one time up to the tower and then have that pressurized water that can be automated to water the gardens through a timer and the livestock as well. I can just put floats in their waterers. I can put a float switch in the tank which activates a pump down in the cistern when I need it and everything will be pretty well automated. Each one of these 4x4 posts is rated to hold up to 16,000 pounds vertically and with a robust bracing system, this tower should absolutely be able to handle the roughly three to 4,000 pounds of water that it's going to store on top. The mound that I built the tower on top of is about five feet tall, and that dirt has been piled up there for eight months or so that came out of the geothermal. So it's been rained on and solidified pretty well. I dug the posts down two feet and poured 40 pounds of concrete into each hole for each post. And at the end, I built a frame around the base of the tower and started to pile sandbags at the base. And I plan to put thousands of pounds of sandbags down there, which is probably way overkill. 
but I'll know for absolutely sure that this thing will never move an inch. Getting the water tank up to the top was one of the more complicated parts. If I had a crane that would go out four feet, it would have been a real easy process by myself, you know. But I didn't, so I built myself a little crane that didn't go out. It didn't have an overhang like you should have. And then I put a little winch in the center here, and I was able to lift the tank up to the edge and then pry it over the edge and put it in place by hand. And then, of course, I made sure that everything was nice and level along the process. James was nice enough to send in a cover for the tank, and I had my doubts. I've always painted my tanks, but the first time I used the zipper, it broke. So I just went ahead and painted it nice like the rest of the tanks, and I've had no problem that way. After filling the tank, I was happy to find out just how much pressure I had. 10 PSI is more than it sounds like. <laughs> nice. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. I had enough components to run irrigation to both greenhouses, and I need to get some more hose, and then I'll be able to run it to all the other garden areas, and eventually to the livestock. This raven seems to like the birdhouse that I built him, and the piglets are doing well. I gave them some eggs this morning. Here's a little update, they're out and about and eating. As usual, here's a project I'm showing you guys before it's absolutely complete, but it's been a long time, I mean over a week that I've been working on it, and I wanted to share it with you, update some of the progress on the gardens and around the homestead. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe so you don't miss more videos about my homestead, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.